Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome Tinkercad tutorial. So let's get cracking. Friends, it's time for a new project. Let's hit 3D design. This one is going to be called Four Way Dominoes. Let's start by making our world larger by clicking settings. I'm going to go 600 by 600. And then we'll click out here and let's bring out some parts. Now we're going to build with a cube. I want you to take that cube, hold down shift, stretch it to Crazyville. We're going to type the number 40 so it's 40 on a side, but then we're only going to make it one millimeter thick. I'm going to grab my domino quick. Don't forget I have made one. It's on my creations. I can bring it out again and again so it's consistent. It's 28 high and that's going to be a magic number for us because we want to hit the top of this. So I'm going to raise it up 40 and press enter. And then we are going to make ramps so that the balls come off this and then we're going to make a cool trigger so that we can launch them all. These dominoes will of course be in all four directions. I'll add those later. Right now I just wanted you to see the why of what we're building. Real quickly, let's make our ramp. We're going to do Control D, and we're just going to make it skinny. I'm going to change the color just because it's kind of fun. I'm going to drag and nudge this out here really quick. I'm going to change mine to 20, so it's mathematically half. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to rotate it one click, which is 22 and a half degrees. Now I can align these by doing L for align, and I want to align it to the top of this one right here. So you can see that looks pretty darn neat. I do want to line it up. So let's do L for align. And I want it to align this way. And then I'm going to nudge it out to the edge. It is not quite connected, but I don't care. That is still going to be perfect. I do want to lower it one chunk lower. Control down. Bingo. Now I want this exact same thing on the other side. Control D. Shift nudge to get to the other side. Use mirror. Bingo. Remember, shift nudge is 10 times as far, and you want to get it just to that edge. Shift select those two, control D, shift rotate, and bingo, you've got it in all four directions. Let's make that one part by selecting it all, doing control G to group, and then turning on multicolor so we keep our cool colors. Now, friends, we're going to put spheres out here that will eventually get pushed off. We are going to go back to the main shapes or the basic shapes, and we're going to hold those spheres in place with a tube. When you bring the tube out, use cruising to set it up on the top. We're going to type these numbers. Type 5 for the radius. Type 1. And then I'm going to make it super small. I'm going to type 0.5 and press enter. This will just keep it in place until it gets nudged out of the way. I want to get it right to the edge. And then I'm going to do a line. Here is my shift select, a line. And we want to align it to the middle. Notice that dot is way out there. Now I can move over here, do control D, shift nudge to the other side. When I get it close, just like that, I can now shift select those two, do control D. I don't want them to move, so I'm going to delete that and do Shift Select a second time because it had memorized the first move. Now when I do Control D, I can Shift Rotate and bingo, we've got those parts. We will group those in a minute, but first we want to cut out the hole that's going to hold these in place. Once again, bring out a whole box. We're going to do Shift Select to put that in the middle. I'll click somewhere else just so you can see that better. Choose a line, and we want it to be middle, and I'll zoom out so we can see that better, and middle. Now we can push that underneath. I think I want these to be a more fun color quick first. So I'm going to do hide, and I'm going to do hide. Now I can real quickly grab those, and I'm going to choose a blue. And then when I do show all, it is easy to grab and group that entire chunk. At this time, friends, bring out your sphere and set it in that little area. Notice because of cruising, it is that simple. I'm going to make this a fun color. I'm going to go with the yellow. And then I'm just going to do Control-D, Shift-Nudge to get it to the right location. 
Friends, let's click somewhere else. Shift select, control D, shift rotate 45 degrees, and bingo, we have got our launcher set up. Now, here's the mechanism that makes it work. Bring out a cylinder and set it down on the main workplace. Change its height to 35 and press enter. Let's hide a few of these or all of them, it's up to you. Friends with those hidden, bring out a pyramid. Because of cruising, we can set it right on the cylinder. Friends, we do want to align that. I will shift select, choose a line, and of course we want middle and middle. What's going to happen now is we're going to create a lever so that when this pushes up, all four balls launch. Real quickly, I will hide this so we can build the lever. I'm going to lower this down just a little. Let's make it 30 so we got room. Friends, we're going to do something really cool. Because we're looking at this from underneath, I can bring out my cube and cruise it right to that spot. Now I want to adjust it so that my lifting handle is underneath, and I want to shrink it and type 0.5 and press enter. Notice that connects right to that spot. Now we are going to make a lever off this, and friends, this is super cool too. Friends, once again, let's look at this from underneath. Bring out that simple cube. Cruise it to that exact location. Make sure you orbit so that your handle is down here on the bottom, and we're going to shift, shrink, and type the number 5. We're going to take that part and stretch it so it's longer. I'm going to just change mine to 55 and press enter. I do want to make it thinner, so from underneath, I'm going to grab this handle and lift it up. I'm going to tell you to type 1 and press enter. And then we need to rotate this 45 degrees. Friends, if you hold down shift and rotate, that is one click. Now we can drag it right to this corner so it's ready to be our launcher. Of course, we need to put another piece out here for the paddle. We're going to do that by just doing control D. And then we're going to shift nudge to move it out. Notice I'm doing a couple of shift nudges to get it close. And then finally, simply put it in location. This is going to be the lever that pops it up. Underneath, we now need to add a torus. This is so cool because of cruising. I can drop it right on the side so it's ready. I'm going to tell you the numbers I want you to type are 4 and 1. And then also, if we make the sides 8, that is more efficient for the geometry. I want to make it wider to do that. I'm going to put the work plane right on this edge. And now I can stretch this with this one so it's a good width for the project. I'm going to push that in, and then I'm going to use the arrow keys to nudge it that way. I'm going to hide our little pyramid, and I'm going to hide our part it holds on, and let's take all of that and do Control G to group it. Let's put the work plane back on the ground, and let's bring out a pin. Notice because of cruising, I can set it right on the edge. That is the exact same spot I was at a moment ago, but I love using cruising. Let's move the sides all the way down to 12, hold down shift, and I'm going to tell you to shrink this to 1.5 and press enter. If we do F to fit view, we do need to make it a lot longer. I'm going to stretch that out to say 20. Notice I can't see it, so I'm just going to type it. And now let's nudge it into place with the arrow keys. Notice to push it through, you can grab that handle or do control down arrow. I'm going to make that even longer and push it back just a little bit more. That way it'll stay on that place. And friends, that's what the launcher looks like. Let's bring out a cylinder here that's going to drop on it, raise it up so that it's ready for testing. Friends, it is time to go to the motion simulator. Before we can go to work, we do have to make these static. That shortcut is Control M. This one needs to be static as well. I'm going to take the ball material and I'm going to change it to say rubber because that's a little heavier, I believe. And let's hit play and see if all four balls take off. Not quite. So let's do pause. Let's do reset. And let's try a different weight. This is part of the cool part of this, is you can adjust it to find the numbers that work. Once again, friends, let's hit play. Bingo, all of our balls launching. Friends, we need to back up, reset, 
and let's go into SimLab to start building our dominoes. Let's put the work plane on the ground and set up a super quick domino run. Remember this technique is so fun and so fast. Simply line it up. I'm gonna make sure I've got it aligned by doing shift select. There's my L, this is the boss, and bingo, that one is ready to be toppled. I'm gonna nudge it close enough so I'm sure the top of it gets hit. I'm gonna switch to a five millimeter nudge. Then do control D and do one, two, three nudges, and then just do control D again and again to make it longer. I do wanna make this colored. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna use the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Once you've got your dominoes started, then you can do control D and make a second set. I'm gonna shift nudge those out. That worked pretty darn sweet. And now I'm gonna put those on every side, doing control D, shift nudge all the way to the other side. And then I do want to flip that, nudge it a little closer. I think that looks perfect. And then this is really cool, friends. I'm gonna hide everything in the middle. I'm gonna grab all of my dominoes. Do Control D and Shift Rotate to move them to all four corners. Bring everything back. Make sure the alignment is good. All right, so those are not lined up perfectly. I'm gonna fix them just like this. One click left. And that's still not quite perfect, so I'm going to switch to a one millimeter nudge and go back three that way. So doing a little bit of math, that really means I only need to go two clicks that way to get it all lined up. I'm going to grab everything and move it to the middle. Shift nudge. And friends, let's take it to the motion simulator and watch it work. Of course, friends, it is moment of truth time. Let's check it out. Bingo. All four sets of dominoes all at once. How cool is that? Of course, you can slide it back and rewatch it or replay it as many times as you want. Just a quick reminder, friends, if you do have one that is fun to watch, you can always click over here on the share button, pick the sort of video you want to share. I'm going to share mine as a short. You can right click shift to drag it where you want. Pick the quality. I'm going to go 1280 so it's a larger file. And then when you hit create video, it'll take a few minutes to turn it into a video. And after a moment, yours will either save automatically or ask where you want to put it. I'm going to put mine in my downloads folder. Of course, friends, when you have finished that, let's go back and close this. I'm going to go back to the main screen and let me show you how to show the world your awesome project. Simply click on the Tinkercad button. Click right here on the gear, choose the properties, fill it in with a name, add some properties. Of course, mine says tutorial coming soon. That is this tutorial. Add some tags. And of course, if you tag it with HLMT23, I will take a look at your cool creations and give you a reaction. Finally, hit public. And I always choose attribution, no derivatives, because I want you to follow the tutorial and gain some awesome skills. When you're done, hit save changes. Friends, it is nice to add cool screenshots. Let me show you how to do that real quick as well. The first thing I like to do is hide this. I'm gonna zoom out, I'm gonna click on settings. I am going to get rid of the grid and I'm gonna add a background color. I'm gonna use this purple today. When I click out here, bingo, you can see that looks a lot cooler. I like to take screenshots with Windows Snipping Tool. I'm just gonna simply hit New. I'm gonna grab somewhere over here and stretch it all the way past. And then I build my awesome thumbnails in Pixlr. When I'm done, I can hit Save Changes. Notice I saved mine in my downloads. Notice you do only get to save three per day. And then I can return to the design, back out to the main window, click on it once, upload that image. I'm gonna choose that file in my downloads folder. Notice that looks pretty darn sweet and I'm gonna set it as the cover image. Of course, friends, reactions are appreciated. Once you've got it public, don't forget you can then go to the gallery, check out the amazing staff pics, 
If you shut those off, you'll be able to see all the latest things posted. If you see one you think is cool, like this one is epic, make sure you click on it and give it a reaction. Oh my gosh, this one is awesome too. Finally friends, I hope you had a ton of fun with this and you're starting to understand how these mechanisms work with Tinkercad's SimLab. Finally friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.